हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरने फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चैनल टीच इजी इन दिस थर्ड वीडियो ऑफ एमसीक्यू सीरीज वी विल सी सम एमसीक्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक मूवमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया दैट इज फॉर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मटेरियल और मैकेनिक्स ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर लेट अस नाउ स्टार्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर वन The first movement of area about the reference axis is a moment of inertia. B, centroid. C, modulus of section. And D, none of the above. Now, in applied mechanics, you know that when we have to calculate the centroid of the section, we are taking the moment of the area. about the reference axis and that is known as the first movement of the area hence the correct answer of this question is b centroid question number 2 the theorem of parallel axis is used to determine the mi about an axis dash 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 to the centroidal axis a parallel b perpendicular c coinciding and d none of the above now this is most important theorem in movement of inertia that is known as parallel axis theorem from the name itself it is very clear that this theorem is used to determine mi about an axis parallel to the centroidal axis therefore the correct answer is a parallel question number 3 the area movement of inertia is the measure of resistance to a twisting b compression c tension and d bending now this is uh, the question of application level what is the significance of moment of inertia that we have to understand in this particular question say as far as bending of the beam is concerned whenever transverse loads acts on the beam the beam always bends about horizontal axis that is x x axis and the movement of inertia about x x axis is always very important which decides the resistance to the bending more and more will be movement of inertia more and more will be the capacity of beam to resist the bending moment hence this moment of inertia is the measure of resistance to bending hence the correct answer of this question is d bending question number 4 the second moment of area about the reference axis is a moment of inertia b centroid c modulus of section and d none of the above in one of the questions we saw that the first moment of area is known as centroid if you again take the moment of moment of area that is known as second moment of area and that is nothing but the moment of inertia hence the correct answer of this question is a moment of inertia question number 5 the theorem of perpendicular axis is used to determine mi about the dash 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 axis a horizontal b polar c vertical and d none of the above this is second important theorem of moment of inertia which is known as perpendicular axis theorem which is also known as polar axis theorem and the polar axis is the axis which is perpendicular to the plane containing x and y axis so it is also known as z axis and therefore this particular theorem is useful to determine mi about the polar axis hence the correct answer is b polar question number 6 the polar movement of inertia is a measure of 
resistance to a bending b twisting c compression and d tension in the previous question we saw that polar axis is an axis which is perpendicular to the plane containing x and y axis and passing through the centroid whenever any shaft rotates the rotation always takes place about this polar axis which is perpendicular to the cross section and passing through the centroid therefore this polar movement of inertia is useful to find out the resistance to torsion that is twisting hence the correct answer of this question is b twisting question number 7 the mi of a rectangle of width b and depth d about horizontal centroidal axis is a bd cube by 12 b db cube by 12 c bd cube by 3 and d db cube by 3 now this is basic standard formula for mi of a rectangle about horizontal axis and it is bd cube by 12 hence the answer of this is a bd cube by 12 Question number eight: The MI of a square lamina of side A about the vertical centroidal axis is a a raised to four by four b a raised to four by three c a raised to four by twelve and d none of the above. Square is a rectangle having equal b and d. Therefore, b d cube by twelve will become a raised to four by twelve for square. and square is such a figure for which i x x and i y y are same therefore m i about the vertical axis for a square will be same that is a raised to 4 by 12 hence the correct answer of this question is c a raised to 4 by 12 question number 9 the mi of a square lamina of side a about the diagonal is a a raised to 4 by 12 b a raised to 4 by 3 c a raised to 4 by 4 d none of the above now square is such a lamina whose i xx i y y and i about the diagonal are same therefore here also the answer is a a raised to 4 divided by 12 question number 10 the mi of a plane lamina is 4 into 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4 if its area is 40000 square mm then its radius of gyration will be a 100 mm b 10 mm c 100 mm d none of the above now here you should know the formula to find out radius of gyration which is equal to under root of i upon a if you substitute the value of i and a given in the question you will find that the radius of gyration will be 10 mm hence the correct answer is 10 mm question number 11 the mi of a rectangle of width b and depth d about the base is db cube by 12 bd cube by 12 db cube by 3 and bd cube by 3 now if you know ixx for rectangle that is bd cube by 12 using parallel axis theorem you can shift that mi to the base and it comes out to be bd cube upon 3 so the correct answer is c bd cube upon 3 question number 12 the radius of gyration of a circular lamina of diameter 100 mm is a 25 mm b 6.25 mm c 20 mm and d 10 mm now if you put the values of i and a 
in the formula of radius of gyration which is under root of i upon a if you put i as pi into d raised to 4 by 64 and area as pi d square by 4 you will get the radius of gyration of a circle as d upon 4 here d is 100 so 100 upon 4 will be 25 mm hence in this problem the correct answer is a 25 mm question number 13 the mi of an equilateral triangle about its horizontal axis is 60 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 its mi about its vertical centroidal axis will be a 30 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 b 16 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 c 180 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 and d any other value now here equilateral triangle is given which is symmetrical about vertical axis and for an equilateral triangle all the sides are equal all the angles are 60 degrees hence ixx and iyy are equal therefore mi about vertical axis in this case will also be equal to 60 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 hence the correct answer is b 60 into 10 raised to 4 mm raised to 4 question number 14 which of the following cross section have equal movement of inertia about any axis passing through its centroid a rectangle b square c circle and d none of the above now this is a bit difficult question in which you have to understand the lamina rectangular lamina square lamina and circular lamina such that if you take any axis passing through the centroid its mi will be same for rectangle it will not be same because i x x i y are, are different for square i x x and i y y may be same but it will not be possible for every axis passing through the centroid <coughs> but for a circle every axis passing through the centroid is diameter and about every diameter mi of the circle is equal therefore in this case such a particular figure will be circle hence the correct answer is c circle question number 15 the mi of a rectangle about xx axis is 80 into 10 raised to 6 units then its mi about the base will be 40 into 10 raised to 6 units b 240 into 10 raised to 6 units c 320 into 10 raised to 6 units and d none of the above now mi about xx axis of the rectangle is given that is bd cube by 12 and mi about the base is bd cube by 3 hence it is very clear that mi about the base is four times mi about xx axis and therefore 4 into 80 that is 320 into 10 raised to 6 units is the answer of this question hence the correct answer is c 320 into 10 raised to 6 units <coughs> thank you in the next video we will see the next topic thank you